So first of all, welcome. Uh, for those who've not uh, tried this last week, uh, welcome to Ripcasters uh, Live. My name is John Nelson, um, and we're a Lynn Climax dealer based in the UK. We're based between uh, Reading and Oxford, about 40 miles west of London. Um, so just some background to this evening. Uh, obviously, due to the COVID virus, we are, as a showroom, we're shut. Um, I'm here by myself. I live locally to the um, to the showroom, so I'm not uh, creating any issues by by doing this. So I'm here by myself, uh, playing with all this equipment. Um, so we tried this a similar thing about a week ago, and we had quite a few problems with uh, image quality, and we also had problems with uh, the sound. So hopefully, um, by doing it at an earlier time in the day. Uh, we're going to have a better better experience, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so what I wanted to do this evening was just, um, uh, I just wanted to make it as interactive as possible. So if you've got a question coming through, uh, please feel free, unmute your microphone or put it in the chat window and, and f fire away with a question. Um, so tonight, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, is look at the components that go together to make up an LP12. Now, as you may be aware, the LP12 is uh, allegedly the world's longest continually produced piece of hi-fi. Started in 1973 and has basically continued through to the present day with continual upgrades and developments throughout the period to enhance the sound. And the latest of those uh, is the, the new carousel bearing, and we will look at that later on during this presentation. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do, if I just share my screen, and hopefully this now gets, you can see my screen. Um, if you look at the Lynn website, you will see that they have let's say three levels of turntable, Climax, Accurate, and Magic. And you may be um, under the impression that they ship those turntables, as it were, complete. But in fact, uh, all turntables are, are shipped to the dealer uh, as a kit of parts. Um, and they're assembled by the dealer uh, for onward delivery to, to the customer. Um, so what we're going to do is look at the basic components that we've got in an LP12 and then we'll look at some of them uh, in a bit more detail. So if I switch over to this camera, uh, we have got a, uh, this is an accurate LP12 um, and we're just going to look at some of the main components. Obviously we've got the uh, crystal uh, cartridge here, moving coil cartridge on an Akito arm. Uh, you've got the main wooden plinth and obviously what the LP12 is famous for is its suspended sub-chassis uh, and that is designed to prevent acoustic feedback so that uh, when you're playing music in the room uh, that the music isn't fed back through the actual chassis and therefore picked up and you end up with a feedback loop. So that's the, the reason behind that. So basic components, obviously, cartridge, turn arm, and then the actual platter itself. And if I lift the platter off, that reveals the, the inner platter. And hopefully I will move that a bit round there. So, if I do this, so you've got your, your speed control switch here. And this is an accurate LP12. And so we've got a tachometer here, which uh, is used to calibrate the speed of the rotation of the platter so it ensures the disc speed rotates correctly. And obviously you've got the, the belt drive around the inner platter and that's working off this, in this instance, an AC motor, which is mounted below 
the turntable. So if I just spin that round, we can look at the back. I've uh, got the brackets for the uh, hinges for the Perspex cover. And we've also got signal cables coming out of the unit. So on this one, we've got some unbalanced leads and an earthing strap. Um, because this unit is fitted with a Lingo power supply, uh, we've got the power connector to the external Lingo power supply. Okay, so that, that's the kind of the top of the deck. Now, what we'll try and do, bear with me at this point, this could be interesting, we're gonna go down. <laughs> Somebody tell me whether this is working or not. Yes, it's fine. <laughs> Great. So let's see if we can get some light on this. Um, so what can we see here? Um, so over here, we've got the, the signal cable coming off the bottom of the tone arm and out through the back of the deck. That's the big gray cable. And you can also see here, and here, and probably just over here, those are the bottom of the suspension mounts for the chassis. So if I press the top of the deck, you can hopefully see the, the, the deck move. Yes, we can. Okay. And over in the far corner over here, that's the base of the motor. And then this unit, here, that's actually a link, the Lingo power supply control unit. So that is met on an accurate deck, is mounted below the, below the turntable and contains the, you can just see the edge of the electronics board here, which is a speed control, which is talking to that tachometer that we saw on the top of the drive. I'll just try and spin this round, see if we can get any better, better views. So you can, here you can see the bottom of the tone arm, and again the signal cable, slightly better view of the suspension. And these, these are the adjustments on these nuts here that allow us to get the balance and the setup of the turntable correctly. Uh, this grey cable is just a, an earthing strap that connects to the uh, baseboard when that's fitted obviously. The deck's currently mounted in, this is a, a standard Lin LP12 jig, which allows us to access the top and the bottom of the deck uh, so that we can service it properly. Quite difficult to do without that. The actual bearing is up here. It's hidden away here. You can't quite see it on this deck, but we will, uh, we will look at that shortly. Okay. Oh, that was, let's just go back. Hopefully these, can we get anything? No. I was hoping to be able to show you the motor, but I can't seem to get the camera angle quite right for that. No. Okay. So that, that's hopefully a, um, Hopefully that's a, 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 an overview of the components within the LP12. Uh, so what we'll do next is actually look in, in some of them in a little bit more detail. So I've got lots of props this evening um, and we will uh, just put them on the turntable here and we can have a look at them. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the plinth. So here is a standard bare plinth. Uh, there have been various designs of these over the years and various enhancements. Notably, they did fluted ones originally. They added cross braces, etc. Uh, all to 
enhance and stiffen the the rigidity of the of the board and these are obviously available in this kind of standard finishes today which would be cherry that we've got here walnuts black ash rose nuts walnut uh, and now they're also available in the high gloss colors um, so that's that's the standard plinth and everything else kind of bolts onto that plinth so next up if i go and get another one this is this is real blue, blue peter style so here's another a black ash plinth let's just try and get a little bit higher So uh, this is a, a brand new, uh, it's actually a magic um, plinth. So it's a black ash plinth, but it's got the top plate on. And what you can see here, you've got these three mounting points here. And there where the suspension mounts underneath, where the sub chassis mounts underneath. So this is a, a steel formed plate. It's slightly dished so that when it's all tightened up, it, it's completely flat. And this is where the motor would mount. So if I turn this over, So from the underneath, you get to see, again, the, the mounts. This is just some silicon gel from packaging. Uh, it's obviously removed. Um, there's an earthing strap here um, just to pull down this section of the, of the top plate. So that's the basic outside of the, of the device. Um, next, what do we have next? We have the sub chassis, which is so here. This is where the so this is a, a magic level sub chassis. You can obviously get different constructions of this. So the next upgrade would. For an accurate level will be a, a core and then the climax level a, a keel depending on the construction of the actual device but this is what mounts all the components so you have the suspension mounts here here and here here is where the the tone arm would sit and the collar so we'd have the tone arm mounted here so it could swing across here and then in the middle here is where the bearing would fit so if I bring in some of the other components. So these are the suspension components. So you've got the spring and the grommets that go either, either end of the spring. And there are three of these on the system. And those would go, if I turn this up, so it's the correct way as it would be in the deck. These would sit in here. <laughs> well, I can't balance them here, but that's, they'll basically sit in here. Bit tricky with them on there. But you've basically got the three different suspensions and these are compressed by the, the springs. So each of those would fit onto the spikes here and hold it in compression so that you can then balance balance it on the on the on the to get the right balance of the, the sub chassis. Okay, so the bit that 
might be most interesting about this, and the purpose of this is, is what goes in here. Now, that is the original circus bearing that's just been superseded. And it's got an oil cap on it at the moment, if I can take it off. Huh. I'm not strong enough to get take it off. There we go. All right. So that's, that's the actual bearing. The inner platter sits in here and spins in here. This would have oil in it, so we'd put some oil in the bottom to lubricate it. And if I can get a platter, So this is a, an inner platter. It comes with a, a protective sleeve on it. And this is a single point bearing here. So if you look at the Lin logo, the, the kind of triangle in the middle it represented by that point bearing there. And when it's inserted in here, it rests on the bottom of this, this thrust plate on the bottom of the bearing. So that's, that's the conventional bearing, the inner platter, slides in there with the oil. And on the, on the conventional circus bearing, that was held in place in here using three set screws. So if you look, with those of you with existing turntables, if you look just down the gap between the top plate, you may see these three set screws which hold that in place. So that's, that's the original circus that you uh, has just been superseded by this, which is the, the carousel. And the thing about the carousel, um, apart from which nice and shiny, um, it's a three part design. So you've got a top clamp, a main bearing body, and a, and a removable thrust plate, although it's not supplied, uh, it's already supplied pre, pre torqued up. Um, and the difference about this is it, it doesn't use the set screws. Instead, hopefully you can see this, it's got three lugs around here. And they, if I take this off, So you can see the three lugs around the outside. And the idea is that we clamp, by screwing down this, we clamp that between in the sub chassis. So it sits in here, it, it locks on these three places and it locks on the turntable like so. This is torqued down a specific setting to, to tighten that so that it um, is secure and clamped correctly. Um, Cap on to stop us getting dust in there. So that's that's the 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 basic me mechanics of the of the new bearing. Just undo it. 
Is the rotating part of the bearing the same, or is that different as well? Um, there, uh, it's exactly the same principle. Um, it's still uh, a point bearing, and it's still resting on this thrust plate at the bottom here. But what they've done, if you look at them side by side, they're obviously different materials. I think this is some kind of stainless steel. It's slightly thicker and bigger. Um, and the whole pr purpose of it is to make uh, less friction, so it rotates more smoothly, so you get better rotational speed. It's also more precise, so you get less, uh, more stability, so there's less chance of the spindle moving within the bearing. Uh, and, it, and the whole thing's stiffer, and the way that it mates with the sub-chassis means that, again, it's all as stiff and as rigid as possible. Um, and there's less mechanical noise coming from the bearing, which would ultimately be fed through to the, the tone arm and the, car, and the stylus. Now, they are sold as kits, as pairs. So uh, you always fit a bearing with an inner platter. So if I, the actual bearing kit, if I go and get that. So this, this is the actual bearing kit as it's supplied. You, you obviously get the, the carousel bearing, but part of that also comes with it is a new uh, inner platter. Uh, you get a, series of bolts that you may or may not need. <laughs> you get uh, some new oil to lubricate the bearing. Uh, you get a set of um, suspension springs. And you get a set of various other components. So there's a set of uh, bushes for the suspension springs. There's an earthing strap. There's a P-clip for retaining the signal cable and there's various other washers. So there's, there's generally more components than you actually need, but that's what's in the standard um, uh, circus kit. So don't, uh, as it were, don't replace just one component. So always replace the inner platter and the bearing at the same time. Any questions? <laughs> so hopefully that is kind of clear of what you get and what the difference is between the old and the new. Now I have to say um, I this has just arrived and I've not listened to it yet, so I don't know whether it whether it sounds any better or or whatever. But I'm, I you know I look forward to to be able to test it, and I uh, uh, I'm sure there'll be lots of reports um, uh, from from people around as they as as the carousel bearings start to be installed. But the reports I've heard so far have obviously been very positive. Uh, I've got a, a, a question here. Um, are the springs the same or different? Um, so they are, they are standard springs that are the same, but as with uh, um, anything which is kept in compression for a prolonged time, they will lose their springiness over time. So when you get your LP12 serviced, it's always uh, the first thing to be done is to replace the springs and to rebalance the LP12. So the question, can it be fitted to an LP12 of any age? And that's an excellent question, if you don't mind me asking. Saying. Um, so there is um, one issue that you need to be aware of. On some of the early LP12s, they had a motor power supply called the Valhalla, and this is an example of one. There were also some third-party aftermarket uh, ones by uh, Hercules and other people like that. Um, 
carousel is not compatible with these. Uh, if you notice the on the actual deck, that's the way the circuit board is positioned, and this is where the bearing sits. This, these uh, Valhalla power supplies have high voltages, 400 volts on this circuit board, and there is a potential uh, for um, electrical contact between the circuit board and the bearing, and that obviously then would connect through to the top plate, and that would be an electrical safety issue. Uh, so it's not compatible with old power supplies. So if you are going to get a carousel upgrade, you need to be on a, a more recent power supply, whether it be a Lingo 1, 2, 3, or a Radical, or, or whatever. So um, you, that's, that's one thing you need to be sure of. It, it, what, it's not compatible with some of these older power supplies. So now's a good opportunity to upgrade. Um, but uh, apart from the power supplies, it should work with any, any age, LP12. The other thing that, uh, again, may or may not be an issue is if you're using third-party uh, top plates or sub-chassis, again, uh, that m there may be an issue. I don't know. We, we, we're, speak to your dealer um, if you're using a third-party uh, top plate or sub-chassis. Um, I don't imagine there'll be too many compatibility issues because mechanically they are quite similar apart from this extra thickness in the construction that gives it the extra rigidity. Okay. Any other questions? Do I have any idea what brand it is on the bearing inside the carousel? Well, it's a Lin produced bearing, so it's it's machined by Lin, um, so it's it's their own design. It's not it doesn't uh, have any moving parts inside the bearing. It's purely a point bearing lubricated in here within a very high tolerance shaft. And that's what gives it its smooth rotation. Maybe you can see in there, I don't know. So I think it's a kind of mirrored end at, uh, at the bottom there. Um, the other thing that this design will achieve is to remove or replace the original bearings up until carousel meant that you had to take the sub chassis out of the turntable. With this approach, it can be removed simply by undoing this top locking nut and then the bearing will be able to be removed from the turntable. So it's a, an easier product to service, plus you've got this ability, uh, if, if necessary, to access this bottom cap to give the bearing a proper clean. So when you are uh, moving or, or your LP12, if you ever take the, L, the inner platter out, always put the protective dust cap on because the worst thing you can do is get uh, debris inside the bearing because that will ultimately affect the performance of the bearing. Uh, I've got a question here from Tobias. Lynn Marketing said, it's a diamond light carbon coating on the bearing. Uh, the, that is what was originally posted, uh, but I believe that has now been deleted. Um, uh, my understanding is that they tried it with and without the, a diamond coating on this bottom plate on the inside, uh, but they found it made no uh, mechanical difference or acoustic difference, so that is now removed. So I think if you look on the on the web Lim website, they don't talk about that anymore, although they did in the first press release. Okay. Um, 
what else can we talk about? Um, so, so that I mean that's that's the main thing about the bearing. Um, the bearing guaranteed for life. Guaranteed for life. I think like all Lin products, it's got a five year warranty. Um, but if, it, if a, a bearing that's well looked after should have a long lifetime, which is as long as you, um, the key things are a, a, put the dust cap on and B, um, whenever you are transporting it, make sure that you raise the inner platter or remove the inner platter so that the, uh, let's say you've got the, the turntable in the, in the back of the car and you're moving it, that point bearing would be effectively hitting the bottom of this thrust bearing plate here and that will damage it. So it's very important when you move an LP12 to just take the weight off the thrust plate and that applies to carousel, to circus and all the other previous iterations of the, uh, of the turntable. So if, if I go back to our, um, uh, let me just go back over here. So if I go there, Nope, wrong camera, try that one. Nope, that one. <laughs> so, obviously this is with the inner, inner platter inside the turntable. So if you are going to transport it, you want to either physically remove it and put the dust cap on or just chop this up and put some kind of ab uh, shock absorbent material, some foam or something in between here so that the bottom of the spindle isn't impacting on the bottom of the thrust plate at the bottom of the bearing. Okay. Um, let's see what other bits and pieces that we've got that might be worth looking at. Um, so let's get rid of these. Um, Um, so the the next thing that perhaps might be a bit of fun, um, we've got um, this is actually a, the the motor. So on magic and uh, turntables, and probably on most uh, accurate level turntables, they use a standard AC motor. This is an old Lingo power supply. So I've got a, a motor power supply coming into this. This board would be mounted below the turntable and then here we've got the the power switch so hopefully if i can turn this on you get to see <laughs> i think didn't expect it to do that <laughs> i think i need to turn that off okay so you obviously uh, have got a power supply which drives the motor um and on a, on a magic level LP12, we've got this chamfered pulley and the belt will rise up this surface to get to the correct speed. If we look at the, um, if I go over here and look on the, the accurate level deck here with the lingo, we've got a slightly different pulley profile. And because it's using the tachometer here, which measures the rotations of the outer platter as it spins round. Uh, the bearing doesn't, uh, the, the speed is all controlled on the, uh, via the tachometer via a feedback loop here. Um, if we go back to the Lingo, new Lingo power supply looks like, like this. So this is the, the an external power supply box. Let me just move the motor out of the way. Um, so you've got a power supply going to the turntable at the right voltage and just the mains inlet here. And this box you typically just put somewhere at the side of your rack or at the back of your rack to power an accurate level turntable. Uh, what else have we got in my pile of goodies? Um, I've got a baseboard. Okay, so this is a, a trampoline. Uh, this is a suspension, semi suspended baseboard. There's some additional mechanical 
suspension in this. It's made out of metal, so it stiffens the bottom of the bottom of the, the deck. And again, just make sure that every bit of mechanical vibration that's picked up off the record goes into the stylus and the generator and the cartridge rather than being lost in mechanical weaknesses in the actual uh, construction of the turntable. So that's a, a that's a, a lingo, so not lingo, a trampoline uh, um, baseboard. Uh, what else have we got that's worth looking at? Uh, okay, over here. So on the climax level deck, um, added onto uh, that baseboard again, hidden within the turntable. Uh, this is a Eureka Phono stage. Uh, let's just take the cable out of the way. Uh, so you've got the the actual cable here, which goes up into the bottom of the tone arm and picks up the signal from the stylus. Uh, from the generator and the cartridge. This is a built-in Ferno stage and it then Outputs in this instance. This is a Eureka one. So it's an all analog product It will then out outputs either over unbalanced or balanced uh, line level outputs into your amplifier uh, and this so these are our outputs XLR outputs and again, this is uh, the connection to the radical um, power supply to uh, power the, the phono stage. There is a, 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 the Eureka 2, which is an all digital device where the outputs, instead of being analog, uh, use the exact links um, as a digital transport into uh, a DSM of some description. But this sits underneath the turntable, so it's a, um, making sure that the losses from the signal cable are as minimal as possible by having such short signal paths. Okay. Uh, what else have we got? I think, I think we might be at the end. Um, so let me just check my notes to see if there's anything else that I wanted to discuss. Um, okay, we talked about the the bearing. We've talked about the incompatibility with the early power supplies. Um, so all I can say, really, if we go back to the um, the carousel, is just to encourage you to go and visit us or your local Lynn dealer uh, to to have a look at to have a listen and and compare. So I think most dealers will. Be setting up turntables which will have the original circus bearing as well as the new um, carousel bearing and so you'll be able to listen uh, and, and hear the difference for yourself and uh, uh, hopefully uh, that will convince you it's a worthy upgrade. Um, so what else is there to say about that? Apart from go and visit your, us or your local dealer, there is a promotion on with Lynn at the moment um, which will allow, um, I think if you spend over in the UK anyway, if you spend over £3,000 on any Lynn product, then that qualifies you for a, a carousel bearing. So it's perhaps a, a good time if, you, if you're LP12 focused for a radical or something similar like that. Uh, but I believe you can use it with any other upgrade, whether it be a, a select DSM or, or, or whatever product that you're uh, interested in. Um, okay, I think that's it. Any other questions? Uh, okay, somebody's asked what the official price is. Uh, in the UK, it's £750. Uh, what that is in Europe, I don't know. Probably €750. Euros. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. 800 euros, so uh, maybe somebody says, okay. Um, so 
I think that's it. Uh, so the promotion, we are probably going to do some more of these events. I think the next one we're likely to do is on space optimization. Um, so please feel free to uh, send us any suggestions you might want us to cover, any topics. And um, I'd be very happy to help. If you've got any other additional questions after the event, feel free to email us. Um, info at ripcaster.co.uk or call us on our number 0118 if you've got any other suggestions any feedback for what worked what didn't work i'd be very happy to hear about that uh, and again any any additional um topics so space optimization probably is next one and then when we've done that we will probably go on and do space optimization two um so that should be fun okay Thank you very much, everyone. I hope the video quality was better tonight than it was last week.